Uh, BTEC Applied Science Unit 1 Physics. So I'm going to go through the test uh, with commentary. I'm going to talk about some of the questions, uh, particularly the ones which involve uh, sums, a bit of maths, because uh, quite a few students on this course aren't particularly good at maths. So I'll, I'll talk you through how to do them. Um, right, so let's do it. Um, so blah, blah, blah. Ready, let's begin. Number one, the, the longitudinal wave is sound. The others are transverse. Uh, this one here, uh, displacements against time, what property of the wave label X from there to there. If we look on this axis, that says time. So from there to there is the period, which is D. Um, next, calculate the frequency of this wave. So we're gonna use this equation here we know the period, and the period is four ooh, milliseconds. Four milliseconds. So my frequency is one over four milliseconds. So my uh, frequency is one over now 0 0.004, or I, I would actually do uh, one over four times 10 to the minus three is what I would do. Uh, and if you did it, you'd get 250 hertz. That's the frequency. Uh, waves from a microwave transmitter have a wavelength of 12.8 centimeters. Calculate the frequency, and we know the speed of these waves because they're electromagnetic. So we're going to use the wave equation, V equals F lambda. Uh, we want the frequency, so F equals V over lambda. So F equals v over lambda, which is uh, three times 10 to the eight, divided by, now the wavelength, 0 0.128. 0 0.128, because it has to be in meters. You can't leave it in centimeters. And if you work that out, you should get, I believe, that one there, 2.3 times 10 to the nine hertz. Uh, the speed of sound produced by an organ pipe has a frequency of that. Uh, we're going to use that for the speed of sound in air. Calculate the wavelength. So again, we're going to use the wave equation, V equals F lambda. So lambda equals V over F. So lambda equals V over F. Uh, and the velocity is 330 divided by 262 which equals uh, 1.3a. Uh, next, beam of light, da, 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 which is false. Uh, the one C is nothing to do with total internal reflection. Uh, calculate the refractive index of the glass. We are going to use this equation here, n equals sine i over sine r. i is the, the big angle. That's the angle of incidence. r is the smaller angle, the angle of refraction. So you've got N, which is the refractive index, is sine 65 divided by sine 40. Uh, and if you work that out on your calculator, you should get 1.41. And that's the refractive index. Uh, here we do have total internal reflection. Uh, we're told the refractive index is 1.52 work out the critical angle for this glass. We're gonna use this equation here, sine C equals one over N. So to get the critical angle, then it's C, the critical angle is gonna be sine to the minus one of one over uh, 1.52. And if you work that out on your calculator, you will get 41 degrees. Okay, this is just GCSE maths. Uh, if you can't do it, it's probably because you've forgotten it and you need to revise it. Okay, it, it's not A level maths, it, it sh you should be able to do this. Um, moving on, uh, you the answers that they're not cheaper. Uh, moving on, and the answer is that uh, they're not always in phase. No, the, the, the phase difference is changing constantly. Uh, this one here, uh, the answer is that one there. It's uh, bigger wavelengths is bigger angles. 
Um, next is that one there. It's a longitudinal stationary wave. Uh, here we go. A guitar string of length 0.65 meters vibrates after it has been plucked. Waves travel up and down the string. What will be the largest wavelength of the waves? Now your fundamental, we call it the fundamental, is when the string does something like this. Uh, so that's your, there's a node there, uh, and a node there, and an anti-node there, uh, and that's the length of the string, and that is half a wavelength. Each of these loops, this is your first harmonic, and that is half a wavelength. So if the length of the string is half a wavelength, then the wavelength is that, which is double it. So it is B, because uh, the wavelength is two of them, isn't it? Okay, so the answer is B. Uh, below some data about a violin string, use it to calculate the velocity of the waves. So velocity of waves traveling on a string uh, is this equation here. V equals root T over mu. Uh, now, this is not the velocity of the sound produced. It's the velocity of the waves traveling along the string. So let's, it's basically just bung in the numbers. So V is the square root of uh, the tension T, which is 200, uh, divided by the mass per unit length. Uh, mu is the mass per unit length which is 0 0.057. And if you work that out properly, you will get B, 59 meters per second. I say again, it's not the speed of the sound. Uh, that would be about 330. It's the speed of the waves traveling in the string. Okay. Note also that is a red herring. Yeah, that's a bit of information that we don't need. And it's there to confuse you. It probably did. Uh, next, uh, which of the following is false? And it's that one there. It's not digital. The, the intensity of the light in each fiber varies continuously. So it is not digital. Uh, uh, not an advantage. Uh, and the answer is B. Digital signals do pick up interference. You know, they, there you go. It's, there's a, a digital signal and it's picked up noise yeah, due to interference. The advantage is that it's easier to get rid of the noise. You can filter out the noise and end up with your original signal. So they do pick up noise. It's just easier to get rid of it. Uh, OK, a signal transmitter emits radio waves on an island. So that one is at three kilometers. That one is at six kilometers. Uh, we're talking about this equation here. The intensity follows an inverse square law. Now, uh, you could work out a value of K, but basically an important thing to remember is that if you double the distance, then the intensity will be a quarter. So if this is three kilometers away, and that's 100%, and this is six kilometers away, it will be 25%. If you double the distance, then the intensity is a quarter. It's one over two squared. If it's treble the distance, then it's a, the intensity would be a ninth because it's one over three squared. So it follows an inverse square law, okay? Uh, I think that's the last of the maths. Uh, it doesn't convert it to a digital signal because it's already digital. It does do all of these. Um, next. Uh, an advantage of Bluetooth is that you don't need a router, but you do with a Wi-Fi network, uh, and that's called handshaking. And that's everything, I think.